Good morning, everyone. You are in the South Seas IJ room, and you are attending the Keystone Engine Next Generation Assembler Framework talk with Quinn. A few things before we start that I need to tell you. Uh, stop by the business hall located in Bayside AB. The Black Hat Arsenal is in the Palm Foyer on level three, and of course the Arsenal reception at 1700. If you haven't picked up your merchandise today, it's your last chance to visit the Black Hat, Black Hat Swag and Bookstore. And please visit the Cali Linux Lab in Mandalay Bay A. And please put your phone on vibrate if you haven't done that already, so that we won't uh, interrupt the speaker. And without further ado, I present Quinn. Hello. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for being here to see my talk. And, um, Okay, so today I give a talk on Keystone, which is a new uh, assembly framework for reversing. And uh, in fact, uh, everything about Keystone, source code, binary package, documentation, tutorials, everything is already available online at that, at that address, keystoneengine.org. So you can go there and get everything you want. Okay, so my name is Nguyen Quinh, and um, I have some uh, academic background, doing research in one university in Singapore. And uh, I happen to be the founder and maintainer of three open source reversing projects, Capstone, Disassembler, uh, Unicorn Emulator, and uh, now Keystone. So that's a question. Anybody here use any of these frameworks? OK, thank you. Nice to see that. Okay, so uh, first I introduce some background on assembly frameworks, and next how Keystone uh, can fix all the problems or all of all the existing assemblers, and later I introduce a new tool key patch built on top of Keystone, and conclusion. Okay, so two uh, two years ago, uh, 2014, I introduced in Black Hat the Capstone disassembler framework, which is the one and only open source. Monday architecture, Monday platform, Monday binding, assembler, uh, disassembler for reversing. Last year, I went on and uh, introduced um, Unicorn emulator at Black Hat, and this is also the only, the one and only open source Monday architecture, Monday platform, Monday binding emulator for CPU. Now, in 2016, we have two uh, good frameworks for reversing. We can, uh, from binary, we can decompile using uh, Capstone and get back the assembly after the get. You can do a lot of uh, binary analysis on assembly. You can also feed the binary to emulator and watch the code behavior. So the question is, what is missing here? So you can see that uh, both uh, Capstone and uh, Unicorn, they need emulator at uh, input. Uh, they need a binary at, as input, right? So the question is, how and where to get the binary. And actually, sometimes you need to generate the binary yourself. And that is the missing link here. We need something to, from the assembly, we generate the binary. The binary can be decoded, again, by capstone, or the binary can be uh, sent to the emulator. So what mi what's missing here is the assembler framework. So by, by, by the definition, the assembly framework uh, is, is a tool that given the assembly injection, it can compile assembly and give back user binary as encoding. So for example, on x86, if you give ink EX injection to assembler, it can compile and return one byte, which is 40. And this by 40, when you run that on CPU or on the emulator, it can add one to the uh, EX register. And uh, typical, typically, you use an uh, assembler for, to gen uh, dynamically generate machine code. And after that, you can uh, do binary rewrite, binary patching, or binary searching. Uh, too bad to build a new assembler is just a lot of work. You need to have good understanding on CPU encoding. You need to understand all the injection set of the CPU. And you need to keep up with the frequently updated injection because CP vendors they frequently add new injection from time to time and it's not easy to keep up with that. 
So here's my uh, definition for good assembler framework. First one is should be a true framework, which means you can build independently, independently build your tool on top of the framework. And if the framework going to an external process to compile the assembly session, that's not good, right? So a true framework must embed everything inside and you can build your tool on top of that. A good framework should support not only uh, Intel CPU, but other architectures, ARM, ARM64, MIPS, PowerPC, Spark, and so on. It should work everywhere on all kind of OS, Windows, Unix, Linux, iOS, Android, and so on. It should be updated. It should support the latest injections on all the cells, on those CPUs. And it should support many bindings language so you can easily build your tools on top of that. So you can build your tools in like Python, Ruby, Go, JavaScript, and so on. Too bad that even in 2016, there's nothing up to my standard. There's some open source projects uh, for assemblers, but they are no longer updated. And they, are, they have many technical issues. Intel itself has something called XED, which is surprisingly doesn't support many new injections, which, which means it missed many new injections in XED. And that's really surprised me. And there's just no uh, framework support on other architectures. ARM, um, ARM64, MIPS, PowerSPC, nothing for those uh, those CPUs. So it's our good uh, assembly frameworks people struggle for many years. And there's no hope that we can finish that. So usually uh, it's our good assembler people write assembly injection into one external file and then they call assembler tool on that to generate the object code. But that's, uh, that's not um, that's not over. You need to call the linker on the object code. And finally, you get back the executable file and you will, again, you need to pass the ex executable file to get back the binary. So it's actually, in, it's very efficient. And you have little control on the internal process and as output and course platform support is very poor. So we want to have assembler for ARM running on Windows, then good luck. There's nothing like that. So I want something good, support on cap CPU, run everywhere, always updated to the latest uh, injections on all those CPUs, and uh, independent, which means you can do your tools out of that with on cap uh, bindings. Unfortunately, there's no such a thing, and because I had so much fun with Capstone and Unicorn, I decided to step up again, and that's how I started to work on the Keystone. So the problem is, again, there's too much work if I do that from scratch, because I need to support all those, those views, a lot of injections, and re note that this one is like, I have very li limited resource, because this project started as a personal project. So how I made it. I want to finish this project in months, in few months. Actually, I did that in two months, not, I don't want to take years to work on this. So there's always to stand on the shoulders of giants at the first place and open source project for community to get involved and contribute. So the idea is, is uh, fork LVM. Keystone is based on LVM. LLVM is an open source project for compiler, so you can build your own compiler on top of LVM very quickly. And LVM is very huge, has very huge community, very active and supported by all the CPU vendors. And it support um, it run everywhere on all kind of OS. So that's very nice. So LVM is actually very complicated, but uh, we just want to pay attention to one core component named name machine code or MC. And around MC, um, a lot of things in LVM is built, like compiler, assembler, disassembler, debugger, just in time compiler, all those things are built uh, around MC. So the reason I fuck LVM to build Keystone is that uh, MC support all those assemblers I want. Because uh, the reasons MC need to support inline assembly for compiler. 
So they have all those assembly for all those CPUs. But note that uh, LVM doesn't support inline assembly for all those CPUs. They support like, LVM support like 20 uh, architectures now, but they only support inline assembly for like eight architectures. So I for Keystone and Keystone support only eight architectures for now. So forking uh, LVM to build, uh, forking LVM to build Keystone has many advantages. First one, code quality is very good. LVM is a very nice project done by professional developers. Assemblers inside LVM is maintained and developed by top experts from each architecture, like x86 maintained by Intel, ARM, ARM64 maintained by ARM and Apple, Hexagon maintained by Qualcomm, MIPS maintained by IMG Tech, SystemZ maintained by IBM, all those B vendors, they do support assembler for those architectures inside LVM. And Spark and PowerPC develop and maintained by very active community. So the good thing is that new instruction will be updated very frequently and bug fix get in very frequently. So they have like very good code and have, we, we support latest uh, CPU instructions. Uh, do you think that forking uh, LVM to make Keystone is easy? Uh, actually, it's not. There's a lot of things to do. First one, MC is like big go and mix inside like spaghetti. It has many things inside, but I lo I only want uh, assembler, right? So what I had to do is that I had uh, spent a lot of time to read the source code LVM and take only the assembler out and I remove everything else I don't need. This is the first step. I keep only like Paksha, code emitter and as asthma backend for linker and I try not to change those components and they rewrite some things, uh, rewrite other things uh, for these uh, uh, issues. So the point is that how to make the cut in MC, MC is big code. So if you cut, uh, if cut too much, you end up, you have to rewrite a lot of code and it makes it very hard to uh, maintain the code in the future. If you cut too little, then you keep many things that you don't really need, need inside Keystone. And uh, I think that finally I had some optimal design for Keystone. I make that a proper cut, just enough. The second challenge is that LVM itself, when you compile LVM, it has multiple binaries, multiple libraries inside for Paxer, for table gen, for uh, transformation, everything. So what I had to fix here is that I need to modify the linking setup. So Keystone has only one single library at the output. So the next challenge is that actually the code generated by MC, by LVM is not consumable, not, re not ready to use because the code is just for the linker as the next phase in the compiler setup. And um, for example, you compile that injection, it just compile return something like uh, those by and AAA after that. AAA means it doesn't know where that one is. So that's bad because if you do not declare that one, LVM still can compile that code. But in fact, if you run this one on uh, assembler, it should report that that one is not uh, existed. It should report error, right? So I fixed, had to fix some something inside inside the inside the fix surface of LVM so it can report the mixing sync points. The next issue is that uh, Keystone and uh, uh, LVM doesn't understand branch targets. First of all, you compile that uh, ARM injection, you get that something on the right side. But the point is that the output is not correct because this injection, the encoding actually depends on where you are in the memory. And it depends on the distance between where you are and the branch targets. So the output is actually wrong. Uh, what I had to do is that I need to uh, view my API so it can, it can specify the rest of the first injection. injection. And after that, it generates the right uh, encoding for the branch targets injections. Okay, there's one more issue. So if you compile something like that on uh, LVM, you didn't report that this action is not correct. So we can see that the X on the red injection should be one number, one constant number. 
And when LVM sees that, it report error and after that it exit immediately. And that's not good for the uh, framework, right? Keystone as a framework, when it has some input that it cannot handle, it should not exit. It should keep going, but it report back errors, right? So here I had uh, spent a lot of time to fix on the exit and I propagate uh, errors back to the high level uh, API and you return that error to to your tools. Uh, another issue is that LVM doesn't support non-LVM syntax and there's no bindings inside LVM. So what I had to do is that I need to extend the x86 parser to support new syntax like NASM or MASM and it build all the bindings from scratch. So Keystone has bindings for Ruby, Python, JavaScript, Go, Rust, Haskell, and the Open OK one. And here's flow of Keystone. We have Parser, we have Code Emitter, we have Linker at the last phase. Okay, so if you compare Keystone uh, with LVM, you can see that Keystone is actually quite different. First one is an independent and truly framework. Truly a framework. It, can understand the uh, current code position so it can handle a rel relative branch properly. It's much more smaller in size and lower in memory. So the size of Keystone is like 10 times smaller than uh, LVM because I remove everything else that I don't, I don't need. Trash safe, support uh, non-LVM uh, syntax. It also supports many undocumented injection that LVM doesn't support and has a lot of bindings. Okay, so here's one very simple demo. This one is in Python. So you can see how easy it is to use Keystone. Here first you import Keystone and you specify the rest, uh, the instructions that you want to compile. And then here you set up the engine. In this case, that is CPU, uh, Intel, C Intel CPU in 32-bit mode. And finally you compile and you get back the encoding. And later, we print out the result. So it's easy, right? So here's the demo. If you run this one, yeah. So here's the output. Um, okay. So after I released a uh, Keystone like two or three months ago, people. Uh, went on to build a lot of things on Keystone. And today I want to introduce my own tool, co-developed with uh, Thanh Nguyen from VN Security. This one's a plugin for IDA. So uh, open short, I already released that at the rest you can see on the screen. This one is allow you to directly uh, do assembling and patching inside IDA. So the reason is that IDA has one uh, assembler inside, but it has many issues. It doesn't support anything but x86 and even for x86 it has many problems it doesn't support uh, like 64 bit injection very well and it meets many things so here's how it works so uh, on any injection you want to change you just uh, press a hotkey control uh, okay sorry um, screen is not very clear so you can enter new injection here. For example, and want to override uh, this one. Pop RBX with uh, other injection. So we just enter new injection here. Pop for example uh, CX and patch. And after that, uh, key patch auto automatically uh, move to the next injection. So we want to stop, you just cancel here. And you can see this injection was modified. You can modify this one to, for example, something like push again. Push RAX resistor.
you can see that the OE injection was changed and uh, key patch automatically patched the next byte with not injection. So uh, just another two needs uh, key patch that allow you to to assembler. So for example, this menu support own cap injection own cap CPU. So for sure, and the knob here, you can see that knob in X statistic is 90, right? If I change this one to AM, the encoding is like this. Right? I can change the NDN from little to big and see the result change. I can switch to other uh, CPU like MIPS or Spark. Yeah. So, key patch has two tools inside. First one is for assembly. So, you can use that to um, compile some as assembly injection. And you can also directly patch your binaries. Uh, the good thing that support own type CPUs, eight CPU now, not only uh, Intel CPU. Okay, there's uh, some other tools I introduced here, but uh, sorry, not uh, much time to have to uh, do demo. Okay, finally. Uh, 2016, we have a set frameworks for reversing. Capstone for disassembler, uh, Unicorn for emulator, Keystone for assembler, and all of them are open source. Multi architecture, multi platform, multi bindings, and uh, they own function independently, but they complement each other very well to make a full set frameworks. And we call this uh, reverse engineering trilogy. Yeah, here's my conclusion. Keystone is on innovative next generation assemblers, support all kind of things you want, open source, and future updates is guaranteed because we fork uh, LVM and you can easily update the latest injection in the futures. Uh, by the way, I bring a lot of uh, uh, stickers for Keystone and for all those, uh, for all the three projects. So if you want to get a sticker, please come to see me after my talk. So here's all the links. You can get the source code, everything here. Any questions? No questions? Okay. Okay, so I give you a tool, and uh, it's up to you to decide what to do. So first of all, it's a new injection is shorter. There's one option, so you can patch the off fan bytes with no code. But the new if the new injection is longer, it's up to you to decide. If you say yes, you didn't patch it. But maybe everything's up after that is, is like messed up and broken. Thank you.